your life. Hello, everybody. Do you hear me? Okay, that's good. So I will turn in as a mute mode. So your life, you can now present. Timo will. Okay. Uh... Good morning, everybody uh, from Turin. Uh, and welcome to join this uh, online conference on uh, uh, regional on online conference on Torino process, which is organized in the framework of the Eastern Partnership um, region. Um, before we start and before we are waiting for uh, everybody to join us, um, <laughs> I would like to uh, pass the floor to my colleague Mara, who will be telling you a few technical details on how we are going to work, and uh, by, particularly by using the, the Zoom. Uh, so uh, she will give you a few, uh, few, few hints and instructions. Mara, go ahead. Thank you, Timo. I hope everybody can hear me. Uh, good morning. Uh, we are already 74 people uh, connected, so it's a very good number. And we want to make sure that uh, everybody can uh, uh, listen and uh, can hear well and can interact. So just uh, a couple of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, let's say a technical tour, a very quick technical tour in Zoom, even if many of you probably already know the, um, the tool. So if you um, use, I mean, uh, we, we will see, uh, um, we will soon see, voila, a slide where you can see the main um, commands in Zoom. They will appear if you uh, use your, you move your mouse in the lower part of the screen and you will see this bar appear. Uh, and um, you will also have, uh, uh, yes, all these uh, all these um, commands and more. The the first one is um, that is very important language. So if you click on it, you will be able to select English or Russian, uh, depending on what language you prefer to uh, listen to. Then going back to the beginning of the bar, we have the microphone uh, where you can mute or unmute yourself. And normally we tend to keep the microphones uh, muted while we are listening uh, to avoid that there is noise uh, in the background. Of course, uh, you can uh, you will switch it on and you will unmute when uh, you want to speak. The, um, how can you intervene? Uh, you can uh, um, write in the chat and uh, we have a chat moderator and uh, the technical producer who will also, also follow the, um, the chat so that don't, don't worry, anything you write will, you will, will be uh, reviewed. And um, at the end of the meeting, we will also save the chat so that we are sure that we do not miss any uh, input from your side. Um, let's now look at uh, the video. We, I see that you, most of you have uh, the video on. This is very good. Normally we try to keep the video on because it's so good to see each other. We cannot be with each other physically, but this is a good way of, uh, uh, of interacting to uh, see each other faces. And we hope that the, the connection uh, uh, can support all these um, cameras. Now, uh, one more thing is um, uh, here you will, uh, you will also see a, a small button participants. If you click on it, uh, you will um, see that the list of participants opens and you will find yourself. So I would, I would ask you, um, use this, um, have a look at your name and, and make sure that it is your full name with your country possibly, uh, but anyway, your, your name, that you are recognizable, because this, this will be very important during the day so that when you intervene or when you uh, write something in the chat, we, uh, 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 we can immediately uh, recognize it. Uh, to change your name, if it is not correct, you uh, 
let's say you 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 pass the um, the mouse on your name and you will see that a small uh, command appear with uh, more and under more you can rename yourself uh, so i hope this is uh, this is uh, clear what else uh, you can raise your hand uh, also here in the participants uh, when you open the participants um, uh, window you will uh, see that you have the possibility to, of uh, raising your hand and this will also give us a signal give the um, the, the moderator uh, or the facilitator of the of the of the group a signal that you want to speak uh, it should be more i think it is all i hope i didn't ah no one thing one very important thing make sure that you have your mobile with you because later on we will uh, make a small we will play a bit and uh, you will need your mobile and uh, a connection to the uh, to, to internet i hope that this is uh, possible for all so um, i would give the floor back to i think i said everything and uh, uh, I would give uh, the floor back to, um, to Timo. Yes, it's me here, okay. Um, welcome, uh, welcome once again to everyone uh, to join this regional conference uh, on Torino process. Uh, of the Eastern Partnership uh, uh, region. Um, we now have around 80 participants. More people might be uh, joining us in a uh, in, in few minutes. Um, we are broadcasting this, um, this um, conference also on uh, the ETF uh, YouTube channel. So I would like to welcome everybody who is following us on YouTube or on uh, the ETF website. Uh, uh, we are going to have a quite busy agenda uh, this morning. We are not going to keep you uh, keep you with us for very long, but uh, but we, we we it's going to be quite intensive. So uh, we have few sessions uh, here uh, foreseen uh, on the agenda. Uh, we will start with the welcome uh, uh, session. And, and then we will move uh, directly to uh, to presenting you the the, the key issues uh, of the of the uh, the the Torino process in the Eastern Partnership region. You might have already received uh, uh, the regional report, which was prepared by the ETF, which is a kind of summary of the issues which we have identified and analyzed uh, while we have been doing the, the country assessments in the Eastern Partnership uh, countries. Uh, and uh, the, the report is now ready. It's also translated, uh, uh, translated into, uh, into uh, Russian. And, uh, and, and uh, if you haven't uh, received it yet, you will receive it later on, or you will can also find it on, on the ETF uh, <coughs> website. Uh, on open space, if you are registered in the open space. Um, so, uh, and after the, uh, the, the, uh, the presentation of the key issues, we will uh, have some breakout groups uh, and we will be, uh, you will be signed to these breakout groups automatically. You don't need to, to go anywhere. You, uh, and, but that's also important that you identify yourself with the name in Zoom so that the, the, these conference organizers know uh, in which group uh, you will be signed. You have been able to, to make your, your your, your wish to, uh, on the topic which you want to, to sign. Uh, unfortunately, we are not able to, to put everybody in those groups because we want to keep a little bit of balance in, in different uh, thematic groups, but, uh, but we believe that the discussions will be, uh, will be very uh, interesting. And then we will bring, bring you back to, to, to the plenary session and, uh, and we will uh, sum up then uh, your discussions uh, uh, in, the, in the group. So this is more or less uh, what we are going to, 
to do uh, today. We will have a little break uh, somewhere in between so you can have your coffee and tea that you don't need to, to sit the, the whole morning here um, thirsty uh, and hungry. Uh, but now I would say uh, I think we are ready to start the conference. Uh, once again, everybody uh, welcome. And I would like to uh, give now the floor to to the representative of the European Commission, uh, the head of unit, uh, Vasilis uh, Maragos, to welcome on behalf of the European Commission. So good morning to everybody. I hope you all hear me and you see me. It's really a pleasure to be with you today with uh, Cesare, the team, uh, but also with uh, all of you who have joined from uh, across the Eastern Partnership and I understand also from uh, Central Asian countries. Uh, we are going to discuss an issue which is extremely important. It is extremely important in periods of transition, but it is going to be even more important because of the situation we are in and uh, aiming at the recovery, an economic recovery following uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. A uh, couple of, uh, more than one year ago, actually, we have launched the Torino process in all the countries. It uh, has been a very challenging uh, period. COVID was not the only um, occasion which was unforeseen during this period, but this is actually what has obliged us to delay the presentation, the closing of the um, of the process and uh, the presentation of the recommendations. So we are uh, looking forward to, to listen to these recommendations today. In particular, we want to hear uh, not only from the European Training Foundation, but also from the partner countries, how they see the challenges in their own countries. And um, of course, uh, would like to have uh, a meaningful discussion with the participation of all the other stakeholders who are really uh, who are today with us, international organizations, EU delegations, and we have the pleasure to have with us also uh, many participants in our overall EU for youth um, activities, uh, actions, uh, grants, uh, because this is a, collabor a collaborative process. This is a process which is based in the participation of all. Uh, the Torino process is based on evidence-based uh, analysis. I think we need that so that we can make very concrete recommendations in the partner countries to see how uh, they can address the key challenges. And uh, of course, uh, uh, from our side, we have uh, the possibility to support either uh, bilaterally in the context of the various national programs that we have, and the national reform actions, but also multilaterally within the Eastern Partnership, where actually we have a very active uh, participation, regional cooperation, regional discussions. And there we have, of course, the partner countries, but also the EU member states, which are, who are ready to uh, share their experiences. Uh, probably most of you know that um, earlier this year, we have launched uh, uh, a new uh, a set of new policy objectives for the Eastern Partnership. That was the communication of 18th March uh, on uh, the Eastern Partnership policy beyond 2020. The main uh, focus of this communication is on uh, resilience, resilience uh, from every perspective, climate resilience, economic resilience, economic prosperity, cyber resilience, and of course, there is a lot uh, on um, uh, human capital, which is a key ingredient of the economy, but also will be a key ingredient of other processes which are taking place in the region, but also within the European Union, which are linked actually with uh, the digital and the green transformation. In the context of this, these transformations, but also taking into account the health um, uh, pandemic and the impact of this pandemic uh, we are um, seeing on the economy, on the societies, I think it is essential 
to talk about how the human capital, how the human resources uh, will address this, uh, this issue. Investing in people, which will be an important element of uh, the conference today and tomorrow, uh, will be uh, a, key, a key issue in the context of this uh, policy development. I, can I ask that uh, people unmute uh, uh, their microphones when they don't, they don't speak, please? Uh, so, uh, in this context, of course, it is extremely important to see what are the links between uh, what we are doing uh, in terms of uh, investment in, um, in people with the overall education reforms. Education is being recognized as a strategic priority, not only by the European Union, but also by all the partner countries. And of course, uh, in this context, uh, uh, I believe that the recommendations of uh, the Torino process, but most importantly, the national dialogue, which has to happen in every country, the participation of the stakeholders and the follow-up of these recommendations by each country will be essential. So we are ready to be a partner in this process. We are ready to participate together with our colleagues in the European Training Foundation, but also together with the civil society, the participants in the education and the vocational education process, in particular the teachers, which are uh, which have been who have been identified as among the key stakeholders in this uh, in this process at the last uh, ministerial meeting we had on education and uh, so that we can implement and achieve results uh, in, this, uh, in this direction. Taking into account the current uh, situation of COVID, which has not allowed us to be together uh, physically in Torino, uh, we have, I think, uh, an excellent opportunity today online to exchange views, to discuss about how we move forward. And the European Union is uh, going to be uh, next to you as a key partner but of course, the key, uh, the key work, uh, the, the main uh, tasks ahead uh, are with uh, uh, the national partners, the national stakeholders and uh, the governments. Thank you very much and looking forward to the discussions today and tomorrow. Thank you very much, uh, Vasilis Maragos, for, for this welcome. Uh, uh, on behalf of the European uh, Commission. Uh, now I would like to give the floor to the ETF director, uh, Cesare Onestini, to welcome you on behalf of the, the European Training Foundation. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Um, thank you very much, uh, Timo. Thank you very much, uh, Vasilis. On behalf of the European Training Foundation, uh, welcome to all participants uh, to this uh, uh, very important meeting for us, this uh, regional online conference, uh, which is the conclusion uh, or, or it's an important step uh, for the fifth uh, Torino process. Um, this Torino process has been, uh, uh, I think, different in three uh, particular ways. And I would like to just highlight those at the beginning. Uh, I would also like to welcome uh, the friends from uh, Central Asia who are joining uh, this uh, seminar uh, in the spirit of uh, learning and sharing experiences, uh, uh, maybe also beyond the usual uh, regions uh, and finding uh, possibly uh, ways in which we can cooperate uh, across uh, different uh, countries and learning from uh, each other. Um, this Torino process, as I said, has been different in three main respects. I think the first one is the scope of the process. Um, we, from the outset, have wanted to recognize that vocational training is becoming more and more part of the general challenge of raising educational quality and standards. And the approach we have taken has been more one of looking at human capital development in the countries with a focus on vocational training, but looking beyond that, looking at other educational pathways, at the ways in which training and uh, uh, more formal education connect 
permeability of systems and also how this connects to the job markets and the skills demands uh, in the different countries and the way in which skills are changing. So this different scope is also uh, a first attempt at trying to capture this complex and moving situation and it will be important uh, uh, for us to hear from all of you, the experts, practitioners and uh, citizens of the countries concerned, um, what we could bring uh, into this reflection looking at uh, the needs uh, of the education and training system in this wider context. The second uh, difference compared to the past is that we have uh, focused the reports much more on the needs for reforms and we have developed alongside the national reporting, which remains the core of the Torino process, we have developed an ETF assessment, which is the ETF uh, expert opinion on the uh, reform process and on the proposals that are being discussed. And it's meant to be a contribution to a debate. Uh, so whilst the national report reflects uh, the views of many stakeholders, participation um, is very important in this uh, uh, process, as you know, uh, and trying to have all the different voices uh, represented. Uh, we then try to complement it with an ETF assessment, which focuses more narrowly on the reform pathways ahead and on options uh, for change and improvement. The third uh, element, which I think makes this Torino process uh, quite important, is what Vasilis was mentioning at the beginning. It overlapped with the impact of the pandemic and it uh, overlaps with a growing awareness uh, as a result of the pandemic that education and training are in need of important investments and important reforms. We have all seen uh, that all of a sudden uh, teaching and learning uh, has moved from being one of the policy areas that have to be uh, ticked to one of the frontline area of response to the pandemic as well. Obviously health and economic stability are important elements, but education and training have been identified uh, in all countries uh, more and more as uh, frontline elements that need to reform and need to be addressed. So the elements that we have on the table from the Torino process in the Eastern Partnership now are there also to provide input into this uh, urgent need to respond and upgrade uh, the capacity of each country to provide the skills that citizens need to train, retrain, and maybe face the different conditions which are being uh, generated by the pandemics in terms of employment opportunities. Um, this goes also to the teaching dimension, the learning dimension. We have seen that uh, after many years of uh, maybe exploring ways in which uh, distance learning or online learning uh, was uh, discussed. We have seen that uh, when we had to be forced in many countries to move to more elements on online, we still have a lot to learn from each other. And this is true across uh, the ETF partner countries as well as uh, for EU uh, member states. Um, the European Commission has adopted for EU member states, a new skills agenda and a digital education plan. Uh, ETF will work to bring elements of this reflection also to partner countries and see what's relevant and what could be a basis for uh, work there as well. Ultimately, we know that reforms of education and training require wide participation, they require uh, dialogue and they require time, uh, but time is what maybe we don't have too much of at the moment because the pressures are higher uh, even than normal and the transformations of the job markets and the impact of the pandemic push us to have to find new ideas and new solutions. That's why I think these two days are not just uh, an academic exercise in, in, in looking at a report but are very much uh, uh, an exercise in identifying ideas that can become the basis of actions, ideas that can then uh, inform and support the work that uh, you are doing in your countries, 
uh, and uh, ideas that also the European Union and other donors or other international organizations can contribute to and can support as part of their partnerships uh, with uh, the countries. Um, so I hope you'll be able to stay with us both today and tomorrow, especially tomorrow we will have sessions looking at the future, looking ahead at what can be done. Um, and it will be really my pleasure to uh, listen to your ideas and come back also uh, in the closing tomorrow to see what uh, commitment from ETF we can continue to share with you, uh, looking forward and trying to support you in the difficult moment, uh, reforming systems, responding to the pandemic, and ultimately giving responses to citizens who are looking uh, for uh, ways forward and ways beyond the current crisis. Thank you very much. Back to you, Timo. Thank you, Cesare, uh, for this warm welcome. And uh, once again, everybody welcome who has joined us in the meantime to this regional conference on Torino process in the in Eastern Partnership. Um, uh, we are talking about the Torino process, and I think uh, most of you probably know, uh, know uh, or have uh, heard or have actively participated in the Torino process. And as Cesare said, this is already the fifth round of the Torino process. But uh, before we move to, to presenting really what are the key issues uh, that we have identified in Eastern partnership countries, um, I would like uh, 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 to invite you to watch a short video on the uh, Torino process, which tells you a, a little bit about the, uh, the, uh, the background and uh, what has happened before and where we are now. <clears throat> Туринский процесс прошел долгий путь. Вот некоторые из самых значимых моментов, которые привели нас к той точке, в которой мы находимся сегодня. В 2009 году Европейский фонд образования начинает работать над концепцией туринского процесса. Первый раунд туринского процесса стартует в 2010 году. В нем принимают участие большинство стран-партнеров ЕФО. Первый шаг – это разработка аналитической основы. Пять строительных блоков туринского процесса остались в основном неизменными. Были определены четыре ключевых принципа туринского процесса. К ним относятся ответственность стран, оценка на основе фактических данных, широкое участие и целостный подход к развитию человеческого капитала. Первая конференция туринского процесса «Исследование и анализ достоверных данных» проводится в мае 2011 года. Второй раунд туринского процесса стартует в 2012 году. Утверждена аналитическая рамка. Усиливается региональный аспект. Выпускается ежегодник ЕФО. В ходе первой внешней оценки проекта был сделан вывод о том, что больше внимания нужно уделить качеству самого процесса. Вторая конференция туринского процесса по тематике развития навыков состоялась в Турине в мае 2013 года. В 2014 году ЕФО запускает третий раунд туринского процесса со встречи национальных координаторов. В нем основное внимание уделяется измерению результатов в осуществлении реформ ПО, бенчмаркинг включен в качестве опции. Больше внимания уделяется доказательной базе, в то время как в ряде стран проводят экспериментальные субнациональные оценки. Больше внимания уделяется расширению участия заинтересованных сторон и усилению чувства ответственности за проведение процесса. Третья конференция туринского процесса «Развитие сотрудничества для совершенствования профессиональных умений» проходит в июне 2015 года. Четвертый раунд туринского процесса начинается в 2016 году. Он задуман как целостный проект с планом по коммуникации и распространению результатов, заложенных с самого начала. Начинают создаваться национальные истории. Проводятся дополнительные оценки. Повышается роль национальных координаторов туринского процесса. Созданы дополнительные онлайн-платформы и цифровые инструменты, что отражается на повышении эффективности процесса. Четвертая конференция туринского процесса под названием «Изменение профессиональных навыков для меняющегося мира» прошла в июне 2017 года. Пятый раунд туринского процесса стартовал в 2018 году. Принято решение перейти на трехлетний, а не на двухлетний цикл. В 2018-2020 годах будут собраны данные, составлены и обсуждены доклады, 
а результаты будут представлены на итоговой конференции в 2021 году. Впервые национальные отчеты будут сопровождаться анализом ЕФО, что позволит сформировать более объективную картину о состоянии дел. Ведется анализ актуальности политики внутри стран и между странами. Выявлены возможности для усовершенствования этого процесса. Охват анализа расширяется и включает в себя вопросы развития человеческого капитала и того, как профессиональное образование и обучение может способствовать этому развитию. Для достижения этой цели процесс становится более гибким, чтобы адаптироваться к различным контекстам и проводимым реформам. Туринский процесс ориентирован на конкретные цели в конкретных странах. Стратегическое планирование в Тунисе, Казахстане, Албании и Черногории – политический диалог в Грузии, Иордании, Сербии и Турции, мониторинг и оценка в Тунисе и Палестине, децентрализация в Тунисе, Украине, Казахстане и России, совместная разработка программ ЕС и других доноров в Марокко и Палестине. В Юго-Восточной Европе и Турции туринский процесс дополняет деятельность ЕС и вносит свой вклад в платформу стратегического диалога на самом высоком уровне в том, что касается вопросов образования и обучения. В других регионах туринский процесс стремится стать частью регионального стратегического диалога через уже существующие платформы. Цель состоит в том, чтобы развивать стратегию и политику. ЕФО с помощью наших стран-партнеров, служб ЕС и международных организаций намерен постоянно работать над тем, чтобы туринский процесс приносил пользу и был актуальным. В 2020 году Четыре отдельных региональных мероприятия будут проводиться в режиме онлайн, чтобы обобщить результаты национальных отчетов. Кульминацией этого раунда станет большая конференция, которая состоится как онлайн, так и очно в Турине в мае 2021 года. Мы надеемся и ждем еще одного успешного десятилетия туринского процесса. Ну что же, Теперь было бы интересно посмотреть, как изменился процесс So, Aziz, uh, the floor is yours. Thanks, Timo. Good morning, everyone. My name is Aziz Jawani, and I am acting head of analysis and coordination unit, which is in charge of Torino process. So I would like uh, maybe first uh, to join Vasilis and Cesare to welcome you uh, in this regional Eastern Partnership uh, event of the fifth uh, round of Torino process. And thank you also for accepting our invitation. Uh, I would like to thank uh, in particular uh, the Torino process uh, national coordinators and their teams and working groups in the respective countries, including uh, those who are not today with us Uh, but who allowed us to be here to discuss the results of this uh, uh, substantial uh, work. 
Uh, I would like also to welcome uh, our colleagues and friends from Central Asia and the international community representatives, uh, representatives as well. So uh, always a pleasure to be with you, to see you, though virt virtually, <laughs> and to exchange and listen to your uh, ideas and suggestions. So um, my presentation that I will try uh, to, to share right now, uh, always afraid of technical uh, uh, bad surprises. I hope that you are able to see the presentation now. Perfect. Ah, okay, perfect. So I was saying my presentation aims to give you an overview uh, 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 about the participation of Eastern partnership countries in the fifth round of Torino process, uh, as compared to the fourth one in, in 2016, and how Torino process outcomes are used uh, by countries, European Commission services, and international organization. The rationale of this presentation of, our, of this comparison is to consolidate the achievement, ameliorate the, the, the deficiencies, let's say, and allow cross-country and cross-regional comparison and uh, aggregation. So uh, I, uh, by now, uh, I, I think that most of you are aware about Torino process. Uh, and Cesare explained the new generation of Torino process uh, extending the analysis to human capital development issues and vet responses, uh, responses in a lifelong learning uh, perspective uh, in ETF, in ETF uh, partner countries. So uh, Torino process uh, uh, serves many purposes, having as target not only partner countries, but also European Commission services uh, and ETF itself as a, a center of expertise. So Torino process aims to measure progress in partner countries and to feed monitoring and uh, as, uh, assessment of national systems. Feed national uh, European Commission and OTF programming cycles, feed national and regional policy dialogue uh, process, processes and program, which is part also uh, of what we are doing uh, uh, these two days. And then uh, per learning, notably at regional uh, and uh, international uh, levels. And our discussion uh, in these events has obviously also a per uh, learning uh, aspect. So as already uh, uh, mentioned, the new implementation process is characterized by the introduction of the ETF assessment. The, the, this assessment has two, uh, two levels, national and regional. The national assessment is based mainly on the national report drafted on the basis of the NRF, the national, uh, uh, the national uh, framework, the national uh, uh, reform framework, but also on other secondary and uh, national and international uh, sources. So the, 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 the regional analysis is based on both the NRF and the ETF assessment reports in the perspective uh, countries. And this is uh, this regional analysis that we are uh, uh, discussing today and tomorrow. The, uh, the, the Torino process principles that you are certainly uh, used to, uh, and, you, and you know, uh, have remained constant over the, these years, why adapted and improved. What we wanted to improve uh, 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 in this fifth round is the ownership as primary uh, principle by increasing the appropriation and the use of uh, the results of Torino process. We would like also to ameliorate the participation uh, by broadening its scope and fostering the involvement of private sector and donors 
and my presentation will focus on these two principles uh, and uh, uh, the holistic view as explained by Cesare, we have enlarged the scope to human capital development, lifelong learning, etc. And we have also tried to ameliorate the collection uh, uh, of the quantitative and qualitative analysis uh, and its use in the analysis. So in this slide, you can see uh, the overall picture of participation by category. Uh, the dotted bars in grey uh, is the fifth round and the red one is the fourth, uh, the fourth uh, round of Torino process. So you can see that overall we increase the participation by 83%. You can see that the majority of, 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 uh, of them are public institu institutions, ministries, uh, central and regional institutions, vet providers, etc followed by international organization that was one of our targets uh, 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 but you can see also uh, that the private sector and civil uh, societies organization participation uh, remain limited though increased uh, 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 with respect to 2016. so but Globally, though we don't we, 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 we don't yet finish the, the process in the other in the Southern and Eastern Partnership and Central Asia, we can confirm that uh, Eastern Partnership is the region with the high, highest participation so far. So let's go into the details. So here you can uh, see uh, the, the participation uh, uh, by category and by country. And you can also see that that participation increased both within each country and across every stakeholders uh, category. So uh, Ukraine strengthened uh, its high degree of participation, uh, reaching more than 160 stakeholders. Uh, because maybe also uh, Ukraine has developed also the sub-national uh, Torino process. Uh, while Armenia witnesses the, lar the, the largest increase in active involvement, so plus to 70 percent, so uh, up from 40 to 148 participants. Armenia has, has developed and, uh, and established a lot of working groups, uh, uh, discussion uh, and they were also very very active in in meeting uh, and discussion uh, the, the issues and the recommendation in Armenia so and they, then this is followed by by uh, by Georgia etc in this uh, uh, last slide on participation uh, you can see the increasing, uh, 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 sorry, uh, 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 here, okay. Some problems. So here you, 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 you can see the, the, the the, the, the increasing participation by category. So, uh, and then the tendency as uh, you have seen is, the, uh, uh, is a dominant participation by public stakeholders and weak participation of private sector. I, I, I think this is an indication that will be certainly discussed today and tomorrow as a, 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 an issue. I mean, the participation of private sector touching the role of the private sector in areas such as governance, uh, skills anticipation, development, uh, validation, transition from school to work, continuous training, and all these things. So I wanted just to highlight this, uh, these points. So though we have managed to increase by 70% the participation of, 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 uh, of private sector, uh, uh, the total participation, which is in this case 24, remain, in my opinion, very uh, limited 
uh, with respect to the importance of private sector uh, in the skills development and human capital in general. So, uh, ownership. Um, the ownership uh, measurement is obviously uh, more uh, qualitative and more uh, and then more subjective. So uh, ownership is about the appropriation of the result of Torino process and their use for policy uh, development, not only by national authorities, but also by European Commission uh, services and other donors active in, uh, in the area of skills uh, development. There are uh, two levels of ownership. Ownership of the process itself and uh, ownership of the result of Torino process. And here I, I, I also I need to say that the, 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 the Eastern Partnership uh, region remains uh, the champion in terms of both process and the results of Torino process uh, appropriation. Though we have some very good uh, examples of ownership in other regions, including Kazakhstan, uh, that some representatives are with us uh, today and who fully owned the process and integrated in their policy development, uh, including a specific line uh, on the national budget called Torino process. So th this is what we call uh, appropriation of the Torino process as process. Uh, and then uh, for, uh, for Eastern partnership, um, as suggested by the strong process involvement, Eastern partnership countries uh, highly uh, value Torino process potential to inform uh, and shape national policies. For instance, Torino process inputs have been widely used in support to the development of new uh, education strategic programs for future VET planning in uh, Armenia, uh, Belarus, uh, Moldova, for monitoring of the VET transformation and vision of skills levels in Azerbaijan uh, through uh, this new state agency uh, SAVE for, for VET which is a very, uh, has, uh, has a really uh, uh, used Torino process uh, uh, for their uh, current reform in Azerbaijan. But also uh, for uh, the Ukrainian, for example, government's new target to increase TVET participation uh, up to 45%. On the top, of uh, uh, national policy development, to the Torino process provides also regular support to the EU at the, at, at the EU level. It informs EU external assistance by feeding into the country and regional assessment for post-2020 programming, including inputs to, input to um, AAP deliverables. And it advises the policy dialogue between EU and national stakeholders via contribution to the two sub uh, uh, two regional subcommittees namely uh, that you can see in the blue uh, boxes uh, uh, people to people in armenia and azerbaijan and cluster four and six in uh, in georgia moldova and ukraine as well as to the annual contributions that we are developing in all uh, eastern partnership uh, countries so finally, Torino process inform also the formulation, design, monitoring, and evaluation, uh, uh, and operationalization also of content monitoring of numerous uh, EU projects and programs. On the slide, you can uh, you can see uh, a, a, a non-exhaustive uh, selection of the most uh, prominent policy uptake from Torino process contribution. Uh, b because uh, we, uh, we, we, we have just, uh, we are now closing the Torino process in Eastern Partnership. So of course the ownership, the appropriation and the use of Torino process uh, outcomes and the results uh, will continue uh, hopefully uh, uh, in all countries. So I think that I have consumed my 10 minutes. So I thank you again and wish you a fruitful uh, exchange that will help you to contribute to uh, the reform and system change 
in your uh, uh, respective uh, countries. Over to you, Timo. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Aziz, uh, uh, for this uh, presentation, how the Torino process uh, has taken place in the countries in this uh, uh, fifth uh, round. Uh, and now, um, I would like to say that, um, you know, if you have any questions uh, or any comments, uh, this is to all participants who are uh, present in this online conference and also for those who follow us on YouTube or open space. Uh, you can write your comments and questions there in, in chat. So we are going to, to have a look at them uh, and, uh, and uh, we'll possibly try to also respond to, to, to uh, uh, some of the, uh, some of the, 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 the questions. Um, now, as I said, uh, you know, we are going to move to, uh, to, um, uh, to really to, to see what are the, the key issues that uh, we have identified uh, in, the, uh, in the Eastern Partnership uh, region. Uh, so this next session that we start uh, now uh, will first, uh, we will first have a uh, presentation uh, uh, by my colleague Arjen Day, who has uh, also uh, been the main author of the, the regional report. Um, and he will present you today the, let's say, the key issues uh, in human capital development uh, in, um, uh, in Eastern Partnership countries. After his presentation, we will have a short break where, when you can go and uh, have a cup of coffee or tea um, and uh, relax a bit uh, and then we will come back here and then we will uh, have the discussions in the breakout groups but I will tell you more about this after Arjen's presentation. Now I would like to pass the floor to Arjen. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So good morning everybody. Uh, I'm going to do a presentation that is going to run by itself. It's called the Pechacucha presentation. So I put it on now. You will have to pay a lot of attention. I hope also the interpreters can follow me because it goes very quickly. It's over before you think it has started. And uh, uh, you will see, oh, I hope it works, uh, sorry. Uh, is, it's, I didn't share the screen yet. Sorry, I have to stop. Uh, go back. Stop. Sorry. Go back. Okay. So, as I said, this presentation will run by itself so as you can see we're talking about the torino process 2018 2020 of course um we we did a diff we had a different focus here we focused on human capital development human capital development is bright broader than vocational education training we always talked about initial vet continuing vet but here we really wanted to talk about human capital development and we have been defining human capital development for etf what does it mean for etf it is about creation of lifelong learning systems that provide opportunities and incentives for people to develop their skills, competences, knowledge, and attitudes throughout their lives for the sake of employment and the realization of their potential and as a contribution to prosperous and inclusive society. Now, what we see in the last five years is that the links with the EU are getting closer. We see more trade, especially more trade, also more migration to the EU, slightly more foreign direct investment, and, and we see that the links with Russia become actually less important. So actually, we see an important change in the region. Now, since the evaluation of the Eastern Partnership in 2014 that followed, there was a new uh, program, 20 deliverables for 2020, which was much more concrete. But, and the focus has been somehow also on human capital development. 
on their mobility and on uh, people to people contacts. But this has to become more important in the next period. We've seen that and it is also more emphasized as you look in the new uh, policy documents, we talk about an inclusive economy that works for all, providing decent jobs, more emphasis on local and regional actors, uh, more emphasis on development of young people's skills for entrepreneurship, but also, as uh, Marago said, also um, green skills. And uh, so there are four challenges that actually face all our countries. These are technological, they're about global markets, they're about climate change, they're about demographic shifts. We will go into these in more detail. They really affect the country. But of course, COVID also has affected many of the countries, has had not only a health crisis, but has created an economic crisis. And also it has uh, um, had a big impact on uh, the, the way we work. Businesses have become much less important. We work more remotely. We learn more remotely. Now, if we look at the indicators of the countries in the Eastern Partnership, the first impression is rather positive. We have highly educated people, we have uh, uh, a bit worse uh, uh, participation in VAT than in the EU. We have better employment rates in three of the countries. We have better unemployment rates in three of the countries. But these first impressions, they are really deceiving because we see that there are very many inactive people in the countries. There are many people also that are uh, unemployed, that are in poor jobs, that are contributing uh, family members. Most people who are small, who are working self-employed, they work actually in vulnerable jobs. So we have identified three main challenges that we would like to discuss today. The first one is a shrinking supply of skills and poor use of the labor force. The second one are the changing jobs. We talk still about transition, but actually we deal with the transformation, global changes that affect all the countries. And our education systems are not anymore adequate to deal with these issues. Now look at this demographic shift. In 2005, things looked better. The economy was uh, re restoring, birth rates were restoring, but if you compare 2050 with 2005, we will only have half the use. We have 84% more people in retirement, and we will have uh, a smaller workforce. And we can also see that uh, we have many mm -hmm. less people in VAT, 25% over the last five years in real numbers. And we have seen that uh, there are poor jobs growing. So a lot of people work now in cities, they work in services, but these are poor jobs. Now, we can also see that a lot of the export, we, we have seen, let's say, a number of, of factors that change really the jobs in the partner countries. Uh, we can see much more SMEs, but they are not profiting from the opportunities we see much more trade with the countries, but this is all raw materials and, and, and things that don't have added value. One sector that is positive is the IT sector. In almost all countries, and specifically in some countries like Belarus and Ukraine, where we're really world leaders in this field. But here also we face a problem that we don't have enough young people coming out of the universities to work in the sector. Our education systems and training systems, we people stay a very long time in them, but they lack the competences and the skills to really act in the workplace. They have poor key competences as is shown by international studies, but also by employer service surveys. We don't have enough practical experience. So when we look at these, uh, these are photos from vet schools in the countries, uh, we can see that there are many of these schools have less and less students, so they're closed down, but still many of them are kept open. There are less and less, and it's a system where we have many small and obsolete institutions. Funding is often not linked to performance. So we really have to rethink the system. So when we look at the reforms that are ongoing in the countries, we can see we have, and also uh, the, the plans that we have for the for the next phase of support, we can see continued reforms, more focus on teachers in the next phase of the, uh, of the European partnership. But uh, we see also that uh, all the countries are, are developing a lot of reforms. There are strategies, they are moving to outcome-based systems, there is more cooperation with the private sector, gradually some more adults in that, but it's all very limited if you really look at it from the perspective of human capital development. 
the fact that most people are already out of the education system and they need to be addressed too. So implementation costs a lot of time and the education systems are very fragmented. We still have training for qualified workers, for technicians at universities, in employment centers, of the, in, in companies. How are we going to deal with these issues? The real urgent issue is adult learning. We have the COVID health and economic crisis. How are people going to uh, be retrained that are already out of school? Uh, what can the business sector do? How can it become more competitive? Uh, we only have, uh, we have to deal with all these issues. So in principle, the main message of the Torino process in 2020 is when we look at these issues from the point of view of the, uh, of, yes, sorry. When we look at the issues from the point of view of what we have, we really need to start rethinking the systems because we really need to think about lifelong learning. Lifelong learning becomes a reality. We won't have the use to keep this thing going. And the people that have left the education system, the young people, they need also training opportunities. And this is learning that doesn't only take place in schools. This is learning that takes place in different uh, environments. So, so that's really the, the message. If you really read the report, of course, the report is available. You've received a link. You will see these things in more detail. We will discuss them also in the, in the breakout rooms. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, thank you, thank you, Arian, uh, um, for for this presentation. I uh, uh, you uh, when when you look at the uh, the the chat uh, um, in in on your screen, you will find the the links. Uh, of this presentation, both in English and in Russian, um, I would uh, like you to invite you to 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 look at this uh, presentation because it went quite fast. But I think there are in important uh, uh, messages and information uh, to which we are going to come back uh, uh, after the break. Uh, so the links are on uh, on. Uh, uh, on chat, uh, and um, you okay. okay. Going to increase my my microphone because I was told that you know I you cannot hear me very well. So um, so the look at the links in in chat. Uh, you can find the links uh, to to Arian's presentation. Um, now, uh, I would like to announce a 15 minute uh, break. Uh, so uh, we will uh, be back. Okay, it's 10.03 according to, to my computer. If you are back here at, um, at 10, uh, uh, 10 uh, 10.17, um, mm, I will explain you then how we are going to work in the, in the break out groups uh, we are going to be uh, uh, we are going to assign and divide you to six different groups three of them will work in English and three of them will work in Russian and uh, every uh, group is going to discuss uh, 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 the 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 issues that Arian uh, presented the three key issues that we have identified uh, in this uh, regional uh, report and analysis. But I will tell you more about that. Uh, now I will invite you to, to have a little uh, coffee break and uh, or, or, or tea break. And uh, you may, uh, may even read the, 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 the slides once again and to see what are the things that we are going to discuss in the breakout group. So that will help you to to be in the context. So enjoy the break and see you in, uh, in uh, 17 minutes.
Туринский процесс.
Hello, everybody. Do you hear me? Yes. yes we can. Good. Um, I hope you had a nice break and you managed to refresh a little bit yourself. And uh, welcome back to this um, uh, uh, Torino Process Regional uh, Conference in Eastern Partnership. Uh, we we heard before the break uh, the presentation on the key issues uh, of the region, uh, which we have uh, identified in the uh, in the ETF uh, um, ETF uh, um, analysis uh, and the report that is also shared with you. Um, and uh, now we are going to move to work in the groups. Uh, we have uh, uh, prepared this great breakout groups, taking into account your uh, expression of interest as much as possible. And uh, we have six breakout uh, groups uh, in six breakout rooms, three of which we will in uh, which will work in English, and in three of them in Russian. Um, and we would like uh, each group to discuss one of the topics presented by Aryan. Uh, and I'm just briefly going to uh, 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 tell you the topic. So the first one is this shrinking supply of skills and poor use of labor. And the second one is the changing jobs from transition to transformation. And the third one is education and skills development systems uh, no longer fit. And... Um, we have uh, uh, so the uh, the three topics I discussed both in English and both uh, in Russian. And as soon as we launch the breakout rooms, uh, you will receive uh, an invitation to join appearing in your screen. So you have to click uh, on join, and you will go automatically to your group. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to choose any group. You will, as, as soon as I finish, you will get an, a join message on your screen. You click and you will be automatically in your own workshop. In the breakout rooms, you will find two questions. Uh, they are the same for all and they will guide your discussion. And the first question is, uh, is the topic uh, still relevant? Is it uh, valid, uh, you know, what we have identified uh, for, for your country? And, uh, and the second one is, uh, what are you al already perhaps doing uh, in this area? You know, how, how your policies actually uh, uh, address the, the, uh, the, the issue that you are go going to discuss in your, in, your, in your group. So we will have around uh, 30 minutes for the discussion. In each group, there will be an ETF facilitator who will introduce uh, him or herself in the group. And, uh, and you can agree uh, who will be the rapporteur in your, in your group. It can be either the facilitator or some of uh, one of you. And, um, and we have uh, also uh, prepared there a slide and a Google document where you can take the notes, but the facilitator will give you more instructions on that. And um, so, uh, and there will be always uh, somebody in case, uh, you know, you need something. And one uh, issue maybe just before we go to the breakout groups is that, you know, if you have any technical problems, you know, you don't hear or, you know, you have something, uh, try to find among the participants, uh, the guy called Diego and write directly privately to him. So he will, uh, he will uh, uh, help you to sort out your, your technical issues. So I would like to say, just enjoy the discussion and uh, see you in uh, 30 minutes.
just to let you know, you can contact me, Diego, in the group chat, so I can assign you to your preferred work group.
Welcome back from the breakout rooms. Welcome back. Now I need to, I think I need to stop sharing the So, um, are you all back uh, to the plenary? Do you can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, well, yeah. yes. So, uh, yes, we are. Right. Okay. Welcome back. Uh, I hope you had uh, you managed to discuss at least something in your in your in your breakout uh, uh, group or in your in your in your workshops and uh, what we are going to do now um, uh, uh, do we have another uh, video uh, i mean i can see that we have an, uh, no no we don't have another video here actually uh, actually uh, what we are going going to do now uh, that we will go quickly through the the main results that we we discussed in the in the um, the breakout groups um, and uh, um, I think we could actually start now with the first topic, which was this shrinking supply of skills and poor use of labor force. Uh, who was, uh, uh, who would like to, who, who is the rapporteur? Is it a facilitator or somebody else from, from the, the English speaking group? So I think floor is yours. You can start. One, group one, once again. Yes. Uh, I'm, my name is Susan Nielsen from ETF. I work as a country coordinator for Ukraine and I will be reporting back from the first group uh, where we were discussing the shrinking supply of skills and poor use of labor force. Uh, we did not uh, make um, any written um, comments or, or minutes of our discussion. Uh, it was a, a small, very exclusive group we had. We had around five participants, but yet the, the discussion was, was interesting. We were discussing a little bit the, the background on, on the situation that was presented earlier this morning by, by Arian, especially the tendency that we have seen of, of young people moving into higher education. Uh, and then we stopped up and looked at, so what are the countries doing now to have higher number of vet students. Uh, we had a um, presentation sharing of experiences, um, for example, from Azerbaijan, where they've seen um, over the past two, three years, positive tendency of increased number of students in vets. And this is due to a number of uh, government activities where there's renovation, physical renovation, of uh, the vet schools, um, turning them into centers of industrial innovation, really improving the connect connection to the business world, having a um, memorandum of understandings, contracts with the businesses in order to bring the world of the demand side closer to the vet schools. And there's also put efforts into improving the image of vets. In Georgia, similar activities are undergoing uh, when it comes to, um, to the images of, of uh, vet schools. Um, and also we discussed a little bit for the issue as such, the importance to look at the growth factor. This is a policy element that should be connected when we talk about solutions for the shrinking supply of skills and poor use of labor force, there needs to be a demand side from, 
from the economy, economic growth needs to improve. And um, I think I would end with one important point that was also put by Georgia. Uh, we need figures first before starting uh, policy development. There needs to be evidence. And this is where we discussed quite a lot about the importance of statistical offices. Figures needs to be be put in hands of the policymakers. This is important when we start thinking and planning for policy solutions. I think this is uh, what I wanted to, to say from the first group. It was a small group, but very interesting points that was exchanged. Thank you. Thank you. Um... I will uh, continue in few words on the first group because I um, facilitated the discussion in the in the first group. Now I just need to find the 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 the, um, the, the Google Drive. I don't know where it is. It's probably here in the. Is it in the? Uh, well, where is it? I cannot find it now. At here, ah, oh, yeah, right, okay, uh, and uh, but uh, did I sh did I share it now? Now I have to do it here. Okay, let me share the screen. Okay, here we go. Um, so um, yeah, we had the same topic. Uh, we had a small group. We uh, we I think we were four, but uh, somebody dropped uh, in, uh, during the discussion. But um, uh, we had Georgia, Ukraine, and Armenia. And the, the Georgia uh, said that the, the problem of attractiveness of VET remains, although the enrollments are increasing slowly. And uh, they're trying to promote VET and, uh, by investing in infrastructure, increasing also the network to make it more accessible. Uh, however, the problem to engage employers uh, remains uh, and to work with them. And uh, often it happens that they still prefer to employ unskilled uh, labor force. Uh, uh, Georgia continues updating programs and qualifications uh, to, to match with the labor market needs. And lately also uh, companies uh, uh, have been uh, accredited to provide their own trainings that is also uh, recognized. In Ukraine, uh, uh, the problem of the deteriorated infrastructure wet institution remains. Uh, however, there are new projects that are helping to, uh, to, to improve the, uh, the situation. Um, and they also promote uh, VET uh, and try to increase its attract attractiveness in order to make sure that the enrollment rates are, um, would not be declining uh, further. Lately, uh, uh, Ukraine, uh, uh, we had a regional representative who was telling about uh, her experience, so, uh, was talking about the opening of practical training centers, which also aim at uh, retraining adult uh, learners uh, jointly and together uh, or in addition to, to employment services. Uh, Armenia, uh, uh, Armenian representative said that uh, the Armenia carries out labor market analysis. Um, they are done uh, by the employment agency, but this is not uh, enough. Uh, um, uh, the, uh, uh, an issue, uh, the demand for skilled labor is changing very rapidly. And this is of course a challenge for educators to, 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 uh, uh, to, to, to catch the, the speed of the changes in the labor market. Uh, Armenia works uh, with social partners and they, they have tried to also increase the work-based learning and the practical part of uh, training in companies. Uh, um, the, the bigger, larger companies, which often have maybe more potential and capacity and resources, they, they 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 tend to invest a bit more in uh, in uh, in uh, in skills upgrading and continuing uh, vocational training uh, of the of the employees. Uh, but however, uh, when it comes to the SMEs, uh, uh, there the uh, the the education system has managed to 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 also establish contacts and cooperation. Uh, um, for work-based learning uh, practices. So this is. 
uh, what we can say about the the first question and now i would like to move to the uh, to to the uh, next question which is the transition how is it called the trans changing jobs from transition to transformation so who would like to report on that this is did i will report on this did you Hello, do you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, so um, I'm Didier uh, Gilibert. Uh, I'm a private sector uh, specialist, engagement in VET specialist, and I'm a country coordinator for uh, Armenia. And I was uh, facilitating the group number two, as it has been uh, mentioned. It was a uh, job changing transformation, uh, transition to transformation. Um, we have uh, a feedback, if it can be shared. However, first of all, I would like to say a big thank to all the people who are not numerous. There were uh, maybe uh, six, seven people uh, coming from Georgia, Azerbaijan, and uh, Moldova. Of course, we have been frustrated because we wanted to talk more, but uh, that's like. Um, so, uh, yes, I can see the screen, Mara. And uh, I would like to say that uh, it has been a, a teamwork because uh, Mara was uh, uh, capturing the discussion and now I'm reporting. So a uh, big thank for uh, to Mar uh, Mara. Did you see also. something weird oh. Brit Britain is, 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 is me? Yeah, <laughs> that's great. So the first, the answer to your question about uh, the job changing and uh, is it still uh, uh, relevant? Absolutely, yes. Of course, and then we then there were. Uh, I would like just to highlight what has been uh, underlined. There were um, uh, some countries like uh, Georgia, and it has been mentioned that are suffering. Uh, that uh, the small companies are stuck in a new economical situation. Not only not only because of COVID. Of course, currently small companies are facing the issue: Am I going to survive? That's what we, we said also. Then the, without and with the pandemic, uh, it has been underlined that uh, digital uh, transformation is an issue. We did that for Moldova and they said that we are dancing with the change. Now it's, uh, it's done, it's here. So it's not, uh, it's not neither an issue, it is a, a, a fact. We had also uh, uh, an information from uh, Azerbaijan focused on the, on the agriculture and uh, that uh, there is a big challenge when they are dealing with online classes in agriculture. It is well, how can we uh, can we manage that? And they are uh, one of the solution. Maybe we'll see uh, later in the second part. It was about uh, uh, the proximity with uh, with the company. Um, that's what I already said about Moldova. The change is already here. Concerning the, uh, there were uh, a very interesting uh, input from uh, uh, Georgia. It was a chamber of commerce because we had the private sector in, uh, in, in the group. And it is not uh, also, uh, only about education, but also uh, on the job cre creation. And the technology is leading, uh, as it is mentioned, a part also in the professional education. So, and uh, I like also the storytelling. Storytelling is always good. And uh, Jan, calling from ETF, uh, also uh, uh, told us about uh, um, uh, yes colleagues that they exchanged from their daughters and uh, how they they, they, ch they have chosen the uh, uh, the way of doing it. one uh, as um, chosen uh, a specific uh, 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 job uh, related to the change and uh, without continuing in higher education and he got a job. And the other one uh, is not the same. He has uh, uh, chosen to, uh, uh, to continue and uh, not yet the, uh, uh, not get the job now. And uh, he, he mentioned in the underline mainly the flexibility. That was an issue. Okay, so now I've got to, uh, to the second question. Thanks, Mara. So um, uh, how can it be addressed? So there were uh, main issue. Okay, uh, dual approach. That, uh, and also it is uh, the connection with the involvement of private sector. How can we uh, involve the, the private sector? Despite the fact that currently there is a financial uh, issue and uh, it could be done through dual approach, but also through uh, PPP, public-private partnership. That, uh, and uh, there will be uh, something very uh, interesting about uh, uh, Moldova, I said uh, uh, before, that we 
already dancing in this tune. So uh, the need to keep uh, the, uh, the, the flexibility is here and the capacity to learn, it is a, a, a main uh, issue. So, and uh, coming back to, uh, and to, uh, uh, with uh, what uh, uh, Jan said, it is uh, the right subject are no longer the same. And that's, it is uh, very interesting. And I would like also to, just to underline, because maybe uh, it's not uh, as it is, it is about uh, the uh, IT and IT, of course, it is uh, one issue. I want to come back. Can, can you come back to the, uh, the first, please? Yes, sure. uh, uh, because uh, they were also uh, Jochen um, yes. uh, mentioned and uh, talk about the mega trends about the digital green powerful across uh, uh, cutting driver and it was uh, related also to uh, to uh, what it has been said uh, earlier with uh, the commission uh, new uh, 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 related to the Eastern Partnership and uh, uh, beyond uh, uh, yes the new. Uh, uh, perspective. So uh, that's all what we have said during this uh, this this two short uh, workshop. But I know that it's always the same. The people are complaining when we're uh, facilitating, complaining about the time. So I, I have the opportunity to complain. Thank you so much to all the participants. Thank you, Mara, and uh, thank you, Chief, yeah. for uh, for your <laughs> conference. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Didier, uh, for your your. Uh, uh, feedback uh, i would now like to give the floor to to <clears throat> arian who will report uh, and complement what you said on the on the um i need to share it how do i share it okay so it will be Okay, let me see. It's this. Is it this one? No, it's this one. Okay. okay. So, but it's yes, not it's yet. It's, ah, okay. Okay, yes. okay good. Right. Okay, so. I hope you can hear me. Uh, okay, so in our group, we had participants from uh, uh, Tajikistan from Azerbaijan, two persons, and one from Ukraine, and one from Armenia. So also six people, like in the other groups. Unfortunately, there, we had a lot of uh, technical problems. In the beginning, I didn't turn on my microphone. That was one of the problems. But then the others were not able to turn on their uh, mics. So we had only a few people speaking. So we have only inputs from Tajikistan and Azerbaijan in the discussion. But, uh, and we started with uh, saying, okay, the situation in the countries is very different. I mean, you can't compare Tajikistan with uh, uh, Azerbaijan, with Ukraine, with Belarus, of course. All the countries are different, but these economic changes that are caused by global changes, they affect all countries. So that was more or less, uh, um, that was confirmed. And also, the, uh, the changes in the economy, they lead to new occupations. And uh, so, so that is really important. There are new occupations coming and countries are not always prepared and not able to, to identify these and to also develop uh, things in, immediately to address these because they lack the, the, the infrastructure, etc. So, So that was the first part of the discussion was more or less, yes, we do recognize that these changes are happening. Yes, we do recognize that there are a lot of people that are in jobs that are not good. What are we doing about it? So uh, we had a lot of response from two speakers from Azerbaijan. So Hava and uh, Reina, they both, uh, uh, Hava is from the Employment Service and Reina is from the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection. They both uh, gave uh, uh, extensive inputs. We first started with discussing the SME development program in Azerbaijan, which is very, uh, very big and very important. And people can receive uh, training and but also equipment to start their own businesses. So, so, so it's, it's really uh, taking off a lot of people establishing their businesses, especially in the regions to develop it. Then we looked at what the ministry is doing in terms of training also. 
efforts. There is a there are regional training centers from the Ministry of Labor in different regions that are being used to train adults that need skills for retraining. And people can uh, receive international certificates that are based on international standards. So so and also we looked at the platform economy. The platform economy is recognized as very important also by the Employment Service and by the Ministry of Labor in, in Azerbaijan. And uh, also they are developing their own platform for which also they can provide training. They try to also closely cooperate with employers to identify what are the skills that are needed. Actually, the skills identification is a real very important issue. New skills are being identified, for instance, uh, for ICT. Uh, specific skills in ICT, not skills in ICT in general, but specific skills for uh, for SMEs that are important to be effective. And they have uh, invested a lot in the monitoring of the labor market. They have started uh, now also a European project on this. They're starting a national body that is dealing with this. And uh, But they still think that actually in this area, they also need a lot of cooperation with the other countries. They need to exchange experience. They need to make the systems better. Of course, because also all the countries are somehow addressing these global changes. So also some of these uh, trends and new issues that are coming up, they are important for all the countries. So we need more collaboration in this field. So that's where I want to stop. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Arjen. Um, now, um, I would like to remind all of uh, the, the participants that, you know, if you have any question you want to maybe raise, uh, please write your question in chat so we can maybe ha have a quick look at them at the end of this uh, feedback session. You know, if you didn't understand something or you have something burning that you want to add, you know, please use the chat uh, for that. Uh, now, I would like to give the floor to the last uh, uh, two groups, one in English and one in Russian, and I think it's uh, and this is about the 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 education and skills development systems uh, uh, don't uh, no don't fit anymore or how was it uh, formulated? So uh, I think it's Margareta who will start. Uh, yes, I will just say a few words. Uh, in fact, uh, yes. you know, in our very Good interesting and be. very provocative topic. Uh, the small group of people which was around the table fully authorized uh, Aram uh, Avagian to report uh, on behalf of the English speaking oh, group uh, what what are the issues uh, to uh, that we uh, discussed and the conclusions that uh, we reached. So uh, Aram, uh, <laughs> I pass the floor to you in fact. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me, colleagues? Yes, we can. Yes, hear okay. You. Okay, thank you very yes. much. Uh, I welcome everyone. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, depending on uh, where you are right now, in which country. Uh, so, uh, we also were a very small uh, group consisting of five people, two people from ETF, and three countries were represented uh, Georgia, Turkmenistan, and uh, Armenia. Uh, so we were given a statement, I would say, education and skills development systems uh, no longer fit. And uh, we should answer the same questions as everyone, as all groups. Uh, we think that uh, this statement or uh, we would say a question, if education and skills development systems still uh, fit for purpose. This statement is uh, always uh, relevant and uh, sh should be considered every time, every, every hour, every minute, every year, etc. But the question is uh, to which extent in different countries uh, they, they fit or they do not fit. They do not fit 100%. This is uh, obvious. No, no one can even argue. But uh, what's the situation and, and, and why the situation is like that? 
Uh, we, uh, let's say, demonstrated a bit more, uh, I would say, a systemic approach without very specific uh, examples from countries, etc. because many things are similar, the problems are similar for everyone, for all countries, and we think that everything starts from uh, skills anticipation or forecast, which is a very difficult task, and this COVID particularly, the COVID crisis showed that uh, no any uh, forecast uh, was uh let's say re re relevant uh, after this crisis came and uh, everything changed uh, almost overnight and none of the uh, systems were prepared for that but really to forecast the skill needs uh, becomes more and more difficult for all countries due to very quickly changing uh, situation in labor market uh, conditioned by development of technologies even without any pandemic whatever and this forecast system sh should be uh, really considered and uh, well some new probably techniques or methods sh should be uh, developed in and introduced uh, of course uh, when we are talking about uh, skill anticipation we need uh, to stress and focus the key competencies or key skills and uh, this is not about as we uh, thought uh, we, this is not only about of key competencies of students or graduates but also key competencies of the teachers who are the teachers and if they are ready uh, to demonstrate those key competencies which are necessary for, uh, let's say, uh, quick uh, adaptability or to, to be flexible, because not only the students, but all the teachers also need to learn to learn, etc. You understand what, what we mean? So, of course, we can state that uh, infrastructures of uh, VET, particularly VET systems of many countries, even of uh, may, maybe the most developed in terms of VET countries, uh, are not always ready to address the quick changes. Maybe they are very good in many countries. They are very good for nowadays uh, defined or decided standards, etc. The quality is there, but this does not mean that they are ready to change quickly to address uh, the new uh, requirements or the new, new skill needs. Uh, uh, why? Because uh, it is uh, there is a very important, uh, I would say, a dilemma uh, in many countries, or again, maybe in all countries, uh, the standards, the existing standards, uh, and the need of quality assurance sometimes cause, uh, cause let's say, uh, some uh, bureaucracy, some formalistic procedures, which uh, sh should be overcome in order to change something in the content of education. And uh, if we are talking about formal education system uh, or about, uh, say, initial VET, it is not so easy for any country to change very quickly the standards, the requirements, to change the curricula, etc. All this requires uh, some time, some effort, and also what is uh, very much important, it requires also bureaucratic or uh, formal procedures, again, which needs not only time, but here I would say that uh, all this needs a deep understanding of the change which is happening in the country, in the world, or, or which is caused by a specific case, again, like COVID or, or, or migrants or, or whatever. And therefore, uh, we think that uh, there should be strategies uh, which uh, would address change or strategies which make systems, education systems uh, uh, more flexible, more adaptable to the uh, ch changes which happen. Uh, uh, of course, uh, there is no solution, ready solution, or no one can propose ready solution for this, but in any education or vet strategy, strategy should be at least a component uh, not only uh, so, um, uh, uh, along with components uh, um, about uh, modernization, improvement, etc., should be a component of ad about adaptability or uh, quick change of the systems. How the system should change, or how the systems should be allowed to change their functioning in order to address change ch change needs. Probably this is uh, all of these were the, the most important uh, ideas which came to our minds and we all we all five were very ha happy with them and actually we shared. 
uh, well, and uh, now I will maybe uh, request uh, Margareta uh, to add something if, if I, I, I missed or forgot something. So th th this is all from my side. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Aram. I think you perfectly reflected uh, our uh, discussions. And uh, I will only uh, say that uh, the question that we had is probably the most uh, right at the moment. And especially if we can continue to discuss and elaborate on this, keeping in mind broad aspect of human capital development in the context of lifelong learning, including and thinking of about skills and vocational education and training is absolutely one of the key uh, issues uh, to come for, for the discussion. Thanks, uh, Timo, uh, over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, thank you, Aram and uh, uh, Margareta. I will now pass the floor to, to, to Christine Hemschemeyer, who was uh, leading the discussion in the Russian speaking group. So Christine, uh, please, is it you or somebody else from the group who will report? <coughs> Oh, I will I will do the reporting because I think that we were thrown out before we could agree on someone else uh, making it. I think that perhaps we were the biggest group and that probably we also had the most varied um, uh, participation because in addition to Ukraine, Georgia, Azerbaijan and Moldova, and I hope I haven't forgotten anyone on the Eastern Partnership side, uh, we also had participants from Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Uzbekistan. So, um, uh, unfortunately, this also meant that we had quite a few technical problems, including in Italy, where I was, and people were thrown out, including our note taker at different points. So, um, please forgive me uh, or us if we do not have now this uh, nice written presentation. The first thing um, that is very clear is that, of course, the issue is relevant and it was relevant for all countries. And I think this is uh, important because it is just as relevant for, for Central Asian participants as it is for um, the countries of the Eastern Partnership and the participants that represented that geographical area. Um, there was no um, how to say, prioritization of something perhaps being more important than others in general. Although uh, there were some examples that, of course, at this stage, um, flexibility of planning, flexibility of teaching plans, the possibility to adapt is still perhaps could be a, could be a key issue. But there were, of course, differences between countries. Then we had quite little time, unfortunately, to address the issue of uh, how um, the, the challenge is being addressed. But what is clear is that things are happening because while everyone agrees that these are still up-to-date uh, challenges, uh, there were several reference to work relating to qualifications related aspects, so which solves the issue of involving employers to some extent, uh, that they're now involved, which also to some extent can contribute to, to the flexibility of approaches. Um, and perhaps this has put then on the table of many countries this understanding that indeed there are different types of learning and also different groups. So again, this is definitely seen as an area where there are challenges, but nearly everyone had examples, all countries had examples where adults are being involved, where work for work upgrading CBT for working people are uh, being provided. But of course, this is very far from being uh, system-wide. I think one thing worthwhile uh, stating is that uh, example that is interesting is the example of uh, Kazakhstan. But I think it could be just, it's definitely just as relevant as in, definitely, I guess, happening in other countries big companies, conglomerates can deal with these issues. Now, so they may be 
putting up their own training facilities, entire facilities, or they can organize their own training. But of course, this leaves aside the whole interaction with the small and medium and micro enterprise sector. So it may be that where uh, we see positive developments from countries, this may be for the moment more happening in reality for sectors where they're big enterprises or where enterprises also uh, have a possibility to influence change and make change happen by themselves. May well be that in, <clears throat> my apologies, that in other sectors um, where small and medium enterprises uh, prevail, this is not happening. As a last element, uh, there's definitely also uh, a tendency, and we have had example from many countries of more uh, flexibility being introduced through different means, again, be it through qualifications, be it through the share of um, flexibility and state standards. Um, uh, but what is interesting is that the flexibility that exists in different countries is very different. So in some places, it's still mostly defined at some central level. In other places, there's a lot of flexibility. And what we also see are first developments where it's not all defined in terms of duration, but really in terms of outcome. So this is also a development now that is occurring. I would like to thank all the members of the group who contributed actively, be it by joining face-to-face, uh, -face, be it by uh, writing in the chat. And I hope that I've managed to capture our discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Christine, uh, for, for, for this uh, summary. I think we had actually, we managed to have quite a rich discussion, even that uh, we had some technical issues and we had problems uh, um, in, in some cases. And, uh, and the time, as usual, is always short. But, uh, but uh, according to, to the, the reports, which I at least, uh, I got an impression that, um, that uh, 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 a lot of uh, interesting debates were going on in the in the in the breakout uh, uh, groups. We are nearly at the end of our first day, but I still would like to keep you here, you know, for about 10-15 minutes with us. Uh, first, uh, we are going to to watch a short video on Eastern Partnership and uh, in in its relation to Torino process. Uh, then after that, we have a little exercise. Uh, which will be led by my colleague Mara. And then we close uh, today's uh, uh, conference. Uh, before, we, before you go away, I will tell you at the, in the, at the closing uh, uh, session a little bit what's going to happen tomorrow and what time we shall meet. But now let's uh, look at the video. <clears throat> Turing the process is a very good tool for us to plan evidence-based policies and all the outcomes that we have previously been incorporated in our strategy and action plan. My recommendation would be towards ourselves to make more promotion of Turing the process in the country and towards our partners to have more communication in between the reports and to be more active towards each other. Туринский процесс для меня это хорошая международная школа. Международная школа, то есть используя международный опыт, мы анализируем 
можем сравнивать, только на основе сравнения можем по достоинству оценивать или объективно оценивать собственные успехи и собственные недостатки. То есть это школа. Короче. Torino process established a platform for all the stakeholders to be in the same room and discuss the vocational education and as a report it viewed uh, as a primary source to see what is the situation in vocational education, where we should go and how to get there. What's unique about the European Union is that the EU is bringing the best knowledge from the 28 EU member states. The European Training Foundation, having worked a lot in the European Union, has best knowledge and capacity of these best practices. So they are advising us, they are identifying the best practices, the best countries, the best experts, which also would fit best the local realities. So I think uh, from the European Training Foundation we receive a lot of the advice uh, how to best match our practices and the local requirements so that we could achieve the best results. When uh, the knowledge and expertise is needed, concrete advice is needed, there is an ETF in place. And uh, I always know whenever I have a question, um, either myself or our counterparts, uh, they have these questions, I can pick up a phone or uh, write an email and I will get very quickly professional and comprehensive comment or advice or review or reference to the expert. So I would say for the delegation, cooperation uh, with ETF and support is for ETF is crucial for successful program and projects uh, implementation. And I think if you go to counterparts, uh, they would uh, say you the same. So, um, um, welcome, welcome back. Uh, now, um, as I said, you know, we are uh, uh, nearly uh, uh, close to the end of the, uh, the, the first, uh, <clears throat> first uh, day. Um, we have had an uh, interesting uh, discussions. Uh, we uh, we uh, we looked, as you remember, you know, uh, the first day we looked and discussed the issues that we have identified uh, in the Torino process in in Eastern Partnership Region, um, and uh, tomorrow we will have um, we will come to the actions and and recommendations. But before I say a couple of words about that, I would now like to give a floor to, to Mara, who will tell about uh, what is going to happen now and what we will ask you to do. <clears throat> yes, thank you, Timo. We want to hear from you now, and we want to test something uh, quite interactive and uh, obviously quite difficult. So uh, let's see if we manage to, to play a very, very quick uh, uh, game. Uh, I would. I would ask you to take your phone, uh, to take your mobile phone uh, and to open your browser. And I will now share my screen. Let's see, can you all see my screen? And um, in your browser, go to www.menti.com and you will be asked 
for a code. I'm sorry, I could not uh, translate. This is automatic. I couldn't translate it into Russian. So I hope the interpreters will help me. Um, I see that some of you are already there. Uh, so in this first slide, you are you can let me know if you're there by uh, clicking on the heart or in the thumbs up so that we know that you are there. Thank you. Oh, I see people coming. I will give a uh, one minute. This is just the warm up. Eh? This is just to ensure that uh, you are all there and uh, you can uh, see the, the screen and connect. I see you are getting there 14, 15. Now it's going faster. Okay. So, while you connect, I will go to the second slide, which is a second warm up. So, are you ready for the question? And again, thank you. So, the question is and what we would like to hear from you, look at that. Yeah. What we would like to hear from you is now a feedback uh, in one line to today to the uh, discussions that, uh, that, that we had. So the question is, in one line, what would be your key conclusion from today? And we will read your line here on the screen. So um, just one line uh, so that we can all uh, take the floor even for a second to say uh, what we feel uh, is our main our key conclusion from today and you can write in english and or in russian i will read the maybe we cannot read all of them but uh, we will see all of them and uh, for the russian i will ask timo's help uh, to and arian's help to see them so the first the first is continue to share valuable be together I will give you time to write. Hey, I know. Miss the spontaneous interaction of a real conference. Hey, I see, uh, of course, but we will have it. We will have it again. Skills anticipation methodology. This is uh, work-based learning as a key training form and approach. TRP, TP, te technical problems. <laughs> technical problems are always there. Uh, we can overcome them and we, I'm afraid sometimes we have to learn to live with them. Continuous cooperation, this is very important. Anything in Russian that uh, Timo is uh, reading and wants to comment on? Uh, uh, there is something that the the use of evidence is the basis for all important decisions. So mm -hmm. evidence-based uh, uh, decision-making is important. That was at least one which I figured out. So maybe I would say greetings from Azerbaijan. Greetings to all of you. Uh, I would say that while, um, while these nice messages and, uh, and feedback from you is, uh, is going on, I, would, I will uh, give the floor back to Timo uh, so that uh, he can pick up on these or uh, make his uh, um, conclusions. So um, thank you also from uh, our side uh, for your, your participation and being with us uh, today this, uh, this uh, morning. Um, we are going to close uh, now, but uh, we would like you to 
to join us tomorrow morning. And uh, if you don't remember, we are going to start at nine o'clock. Uh, it's a Central European time. Uh, you will receive an, a reminder uh, from the conference organizers with the Zoom link, so you don't need to need to um, look for it. Um, uh, um, uh, tomorrow, so you will get a uh, uh, refresh link. Um, we invite you to 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 be here uh, at nine o'clock, so that if you have any technical issues, you know we can we can sort them out before uh, before we start uh, uh, tomorrow our uh, second day. Um, uh, tomorrow we uh, are going to continue discussing uh, the the, uh, the 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 recommendations and actions that are uh, uh, our our uh, point of view, if I can say so, on the issues that we discussed today. So we start the day uh, with the presentation, which will be done again by Arian. Uh, where he will uh, summarize uh, what are the possible ways forward. And, um, and after that, we are going to again uh, have a discussion. Uh, we will do it uh, in plenary, and we hope that uh, we will be able to, to, to give a floor to, to several participants. Um, so uh, this is what we are going to do, uh, do in, the, in the first thing in the morning. Then we will have a little break. And after the break, uh, we have a panel discussion. And uh, I think this is going to be quite interesting because uh, the Lawrence Meredith from the European Commission and he's the director for uh, Eastern Partnership. So a big boss uh, who is behind uh, on, on what the EU is actually uh, doing in the Eastern Partnership region. So he will tell you uh, tomorrow about uh, the new priorities and the ideas, plans, which, uh, which uh, the, the U European Union has in terms of uh, future cooperation in Eastern Part Partnership region. And then um, after the panel, uh, we will then conclude and uh, and uh, and uh, and agree on uh, what will be the next step. So this is uh, more or less the agenda for tomorrow. So I, I hope to see you all uh, at nine o'clock with us. I would like to thank you for your for staying with us, being with us, being active participants. If you again have any questions or whatsoever, please use the chat and uh, send us the link. I would also like to thank all our followers on YouTube and the open space. Thank you for being with us. And again, uh, we will broadcast this conference tomorrow. So you can either join uh, on YouTube or open space to follow the, our discussion. So I wish you a very nice day and uh, hope to see you all uh, tomorrow. Okay, let's um, switch on the mic and give a big applause to, to, to Tim. <laughs> okay. See you tomorrow. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. Bye 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 Спасибо, до свидания, до завтра. До свидания, до завтра. Хорошего дня вам всем.